when we train our minds to find the happiness in every moment, to me, that's like long lasting happiness. That's like genuine real life happiness. So welcome to the Tea On, where we sip tea and we talk about things. I don't have tea today, um, so I'm kind of fake, but there is water in this, so I'm very excited. <laughs> water is also cool too, so it's the water on today. Um, but today I'm so, so, so excited, um, not only because the person that I'm talking to is like such a bright light, um, but I think we're kindred spirits and it's really nice to talk to somebody that I feel like I can just connect yes. to and really have an organic conversation, especially an organic conversation about something that is so important and so prominent in our generation and society. So it's really nice to hear your perspective on it and maybe see if we can help some people see themselves a bit in this conversation. So without further ado, I am here with Miss Megan Gallagher, who I'm definitely gonna let you introduce yourself, but I mean, yes. TED Talks, you're a best-selling author, writer, host, I mean, <laughs> all. Thank you so much, Jasmine. Um, I am so excited to be here today. I am so honored. I So like Jasmine said, my name is Megan Gallagher and I am a 24 year old two time TED talk speaker, number one best selling author on Amazon nonfiction. Um, currently working on my fourth book and I'm also an After Buzz TV host and a writer as well as anxiety advocate for teenagers and I also speak at middle schools and high schools and I also host my own podcast Reaching New Heights and I feel like my purpose and mission in life is really just to change the school system and to really help teenagers and from my own experience when I was younger um just i remember vividly you know how alone i felt with struggles and there weren't any open conversations about mental health or self-care or you know body positivity so i was like well i guess i'm the only one feeling this way and now i realize it's far from the truth but i just you know i really want to um just be the role model that i wish was around when i was younger Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that goes hand in hand with like the notion of like being the change that you want to see. Yes. I, I love the fact that you mentioned that like you felt alone in it because there wasn't a dialogue because I've, I've seen that happen. And it's mm -hmm. one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to go into journalism was the fact that if we're not talking about things, we think that we're alone in that experience. And that can mm. really just, it can really drive the suffering much deeper because you don't feel an outlet to express it. And so when we have conversations on our platforms, we can really just bring light to it and, and hopefully healing. Um, yes, yeah. So you being an anxiety advocate, I think you were the perfect person to talk about um, <laughs> anxiety basically and you know, wow. what it's like and how we can really properly maneuver it because I don't know if it's necessarily something that you can really fully eradicate, but it is something that you can learn how to cope with in the healthiest manner, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. yeah, we'll talk about your experience with it and my experience with it and yeah, how we can do that. So the first I question that I have that I think is really important because I think it's, it's, it's evident that we need to normalize the idea that anxiety looks different for everybody. Yes. So I, I was curious to know what anxiety looks like for you and what your journey with it was. Yeah. And that's honestly, Jasmine, that's such a great way to put it because I noticed that, you know, the word discrimination, I don't think it's just for like race or anything, but I've been, I've been personally discriminated against, you know, with my mental health. And I thought that was really interesting because I remember in high school, you know, I had boys and friends and people would be like, you? Like you, Megan Gallagher, of all people, you have anxiety? Like, no, no, you don't. And I just felt like, well, like, do I deserve a right to be anxious? And I struggled with that for a long time of, you know, I, I'm like, I'm being raised in a really nice community. My family has money, we have food on the table. So for a while I felt that guilt of, well, what do I have to really be anxious about? And, and I would kind of like guilt trip myself, but then I realized, well, you know, for me, my anxiety is hereditary and it runs in my family and my mind naturally is raised, my, like my mind naturally just wants to overthink and overanalyze and kind of worry a lot. So to me, 
yes, like I've done a lot of inner work, but I also can't help the fact that it's just how I was born with, with a mind that wants to do that. Although I'm old enough and more mature, but you know, I've had so many people kind of just say, well, you like, but to me, I'm a high functioning anxious person. So like you said, you know, depression, anxiety, I think we have stereotypical what it looks like. You know, it's going to be someone who sleeps until noon, who, you know, is eating cereal out of bed and just watches Netflix for hours and right. cries a lot. But it's not really the truth. Like there are people who are high functioning, who to me, you know, their way of like, dealing or coping with anxiousness or negative thoughts it's by cleaning and organizing and actually like getting stuff done and having a schedule because to them that makes them feel fulfilled you know it makes them feel like they got stuff done so that's how i act and i am really extrovert super social really outgoing so you know, that's just, that's how I am. And that's just how, to me, growing up, I used comedy and humor and I was the class clown and always in the school, you know, school assemblies and the skits and the plays and being like the goofy character. Cause that's how I um, coped. And I kind of like, you know, deflected my anxiety and that was, yeah, but that's just, I think it's important for people to know, you know, not like people just show it in different ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and a lot of people internalize, you know what I mean? I, I found myself internalizing it a lot, and I, I've had the same experience. I think being somebody who is more extroverted and who does like to be, you know, social, uh, you can kind of, you know, it'll it'll throw people off when you say that you identify with anxiety or that you felt anxious, but yes, it comes in so many blankets <laughs> and so many forms, and I think people need to know that so that they can understand that, like, it doesn't look one way, and that doesn't mean that you there's only one way to deal with it either. You know what I mean? There's a lot mm -hmm. of mechanisms. And so, yeah. And another thing that I, I really thought was interesting was, um, you know, you being 24, I'm 24 as well. So we're, <gasps> Woo! I know we didn't even talk about that, but I'm like, we're the same age, um, crazy. But you know, we're in this like really distinct line where we can fit in with millennials, but we can also fit in with Gen Z. Mm -hmm. um, but being 24, I think we also remember what life was like before social media, but are also really keen on the fact that we did grow up, you know, we our, our adolescence was tied into like the rise of MySpace and Facebook and stuff like that. Yeah, and obviously, you know, social media has played such an incredible role in in anxiety, I think, you know, when it comes mm -hmm. to like, comparing yourself to others. so. But also it's it's helped be a tool for awareness. So where do you stand with social media? Do you think it's maybe worsened things or? That's a great question. I personally feel that it's kind of like a catch, you know, 182, whatever it's called, a catch 22 or something where it like, it provides so much insight and it is so helpful. And I do feel like in 2020, there are so many open conversations and people have forums and blogs and columns about mental health. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I also feel that, you know, social media is still social media. It, for me, if I were to wake up, you know, jump on my phone and I'm like, oh, oh, you know, I can start feeling the feelings of, you know, FOMO, missing out, not good enough. I can feel that starting to come in. Right. But, but I think it's really powerful just when you like wake up and you just like center yourself first and you kind of just realize, you know, while I'm scrolling, like I can, I can still scroll on Instagram and I can still be mindful, you know, I can still actually sit and think, well, you know, this person, I feel triggered. So what is it about their picture that's really triggering me? Because I like to take responsibility for my feelings and thoughts and emotions, you know? So it's not really about what the other person is posting or doing. It's about my response, you know, like, why do I feel so triggered? Well, maybe because I wish I had their body or, you know, I wish I looked like that, or I, you know, wished I went to a party last night or whatever it may be. I think it's important to be mindful. Absolutely. And, and my thing is that I think it, it so quickly became, uh, a tool to be a highlight reel of people's lives. Yes. <laughs> and, which is crazy. I, I, I never thought that that was the intention of what social media mm -hmm. is. It's sort of gone that path. And so I will say, you know, to anybody who does experience 
comparing your very real life to what people show in their lives to be, which is mm-hmm. normal God, you know, um, to really monitor who it is that you're following and who it is that you are scrolling and ingesting every single day because you do have control over that. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, weeding out my following um, really helped me to get back into that place and committing to the idea of like not going on my phone the minute I open my eyes in the morning and like mm-hmm. because yeah, that'll that makes a huge difference. <laughs> yes, it totally does. <laughs> um, and, and one thing that because I, I just mentioned control and that is something that I think you mentioned as well in your incredible Instagram post today. Yeah. <laughs> is this notion that our lives and who we are is a product of our choices. Mm-hmm. You know, we live in a participatory universe and so our immediate environment is sort of reflective and it's a mirror of the choices that you make, who you decide to wake up to be and the life that you decide to live. So what are some ways that we can actively choose to be the best versions of ourselves and to be able to conquer our anxiety? Yes, so I think the best way we can do that is one, just noticing, you know, when we do feel anxious, I think self-awareness is number one. Like just be self-aware of, is it a certain time of day that kind of your thoughts kind of go like scattered and you're like, wait, whoa, like come back, come back, come back. Like let's stay in one place at one time. And, or is it, you know, talking to that one family member that always, you know, it just triggers you no matter what. It's just being being aware of, you know, your triggers and being self-aware of your thoughts and your emotions when you're around certain people or when you're in a certain place or a certain time of day. Because, you know, regardless of if someone else is being a bully or they're kind of, you know, you just are like, this person is annoying me or they're making mean comments, we can always remember, you know, we get to control our thoughts and that's a beautiful thing. And they, like our thoughts, that's our safe place, you know? And it's just important to remember that person, they they can't, you know, they can't like buy a space in there unless we allow them to do that and we give away that power. So I think self-awareness is one. I think two is journaling or doing deep breath work and really just noticing, you know, well, where did my mind go? Because I woke up this morning and it's kind of like a trail of breadcrumbs, you know, like I woke up this morning, I felt good. I did my breath work. I, you know, felt very like in the moment. And I, you know, felt like, like to me, managing my thoughts, it's like, I'm a, you know, I'm, I imagine it's like a single mom or someone trying to take like a babysitter or someone trying to take care of like six kids at once. Like two, you're like, oh, I got this. This is easy. Like this is manageable. And then all of a sudden two goes into four and it doubles and you're like, whoa, wait. Right. And, you know, before you know it, it's like 10 kids, it's like, you know, 10,000 different thoughts. And you're like, wait, I can't, I don't, you know, I don't have enough time to like figure out why I'm thinking all these things or, you know, to pull it back. So practicing the mindful tools is just really powerful, you know, before you have a full blown panic attack or before you just are like, wait, my day started off so good. And why did it go this way? Just making a list of, you know, what what am I thinking about? Like write down your actual thoughts onto paper because your thoughts create your feelings. You know, they go hand in hand. So it's not one without the other. So if, you know, I always say if people are confused of like, why am I in a funk? Why am I, you know, this way? It's just, what are you thinking about? If your thoughts don't make you feel good, then that's kind of your answer. <laughs> exactly, totally. Wow, I love that you said that. And I've never even thought about it in that way, but it's so true. And journaling has changed my life. I mean, I go through like five journals a week because I'm constantly like, I'm having an emotion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, right? mm-hmm. That's incredible. But you mentioned the idea of like having uh, spiritual like tools, not spiritual tools, but I, yeah. I, I always mention like your spiritual hygiene or your spiritual toolkit because, mm-hmm. you know, the idea of like, just like regular physical hygiene, you can't take a shower once and think that you'll be clean for the rest of your life so when it comes to your mental health and your spirituality you know you can't just like meditate once and think that you know you're going to be cruising forever it's it's definitely um it takes commitment and it takes consistency so what is one part of your routine that 
you think maybe everybody should incorporate like maybe just one thing because I, I mean for me personally I have like a million but yes yeah. so I'm a self-care queen I love it um yeah. I would say number one thing is honestly breath work to me like when I was younger I loved therapy I loved EFT tapping um yeah. I would say okay between breath work and EFT tapping those are like a tie because yeah. like EFT tapping, um, it stands for emotional freedom technique. And basically you start off, you know, like this is the karate chop point on the side of your hand. So you start off like whatever is going on in your life, you know, you start tapping, like, even though, um, you know, my roommate is annoying me or like whatever, whatever is going on, whatever stress, even though that boy didn't text me back, even though that person looked at me this way, whatever it may be, that's just causing you stress. One, don't judge yourself for feeling that way. Don't beat yourself up. Don't try to like, wait, but it's, you know, but it's my sister, but it's this, how you're feeling is how you're feeling. You know, don't try to judge yourself or shame yourself, honor what you're feeling and then just work through it. You know, even though I'm feeling this way, I know that we may have a different sense of humor or I know that what my sibling does, it's out of my control. And I know that, you know, I'm not a reflection, like just doing things to kind of like help you get to like a conclusion or to a more positive place and replacing the negative thoughts with positive thoughts. But I also, I love breath work. I love just lying on a yoga mat. And to me, that's like go to, or if I'm, <laughs> I have done this too. Like I've been on a plane before or in a car and I've started feeling anxious and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I know what to do. So I'll like, if I'm on a plane, I'll go to the bathroom and I'll literally just start going like, <laughs> like in and out my nose super fast. That's like a Tony Robbins method. It's really good for um, like calming and centering. And then or, you know, if I can lie down, I'll do like really quick, like deep belly breathing where I push out my stomach really far. But yeah, it's just like coming back to the present moment. I have to do it sometimes 15 times a day, but it's okay because it's just, you know, it's building that muscle of, okay, it's 1230 and, um, you know, kind of just grounding yourself in the present moment. Yes. Oh my gosh. You're like speaking my language. It's so... I know. I love... I could talk about self-care for like literally five days straight. <laughs> Same. A hundred percent. And like I I work with breath work um, basically daily, but there's like one specific routine that is so insane. Like, you know, I'm sure you know like the belly, chest. Yes. I try to do it once a week. Um, I you love that. So much. You release. And I think that's... The yeah. That you don't realize how much pent up energy you have. Um, and my therapist introduced me to tapping and ever since then I've always, and she'll be like, all right, what did we talk about today? And I'll like, you know, do all the, and it's really like, I mean, for me, what I would say, um, aside from meditation, tapping, breath work, uh, also therapy, I think we need to normalize the idea of like mm. actually seeking counseling and, and, you know, mm -hmm. and the healing that can bring you. But I think a combination of all those tools and knowing what intuitively feels right in that moment for you sometimes laying down and like eating ice cream is the self-care that you need you know what I mean yeah and that's the thing too you know it's not it's just not judging yourself like I think we can be so harsh on ourselves. of you know like well why does thinking about this person you know cause a pit in my stomach and I you know I've known them for 10 years whatever it is it's like to me you know our body doesn't lie like our body has the answer and our body knows just you can't you can't deny you know if thinking about something causes you a pit in your stomach you can't deny that so i think it's important to like trust our gut feelings and our intuition and just to really listen to you know that person texted me and i felt like a you know elevator like a roller coaster like a drop in my stomach so that's trying to tell me something um and i think just really knowing like you know i I don't know. Yeah, just like trusting your body. It's just important. Trusting your body. Thank you for saying that. That's so important. Absolutely. Yeah. Your body always knows who is an energy vampire and what's not sitting right. Mm. Your intuition, honey. Listen to her. <laughs> oh my gosh. I straight up have had so many moments where I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is my intuition. Okay. <laughs> Uh, I could go on for hours about that, but I won't. I know. Because I really can't. 
But uh, another thing that you brought up in your Instagram post, which is something that I was really excited to bring up, especially because it's something that I personally am like conquering right now. Um, it's the idea of, I think the fact that everybody is seeking lasting happiness is something mm. that can oftentimes bring us anxiety because I think we don't even realize that we're basing this happiness that we're seeking on conditional things, you know, achieving yes. goals getting to certain milestones in life. And so mm -hmm. I think obviously it goes without saying that, you know, basing your happiness on anything outside of yourself is going to, at some point, it's not gonna last, you know what I mean? So I wanna know your take on how we can find lasting happiness and, and that whole notion of that. Yeah, that's such a great point too. I think I personally call that horizon living where it's like, you know how in infinity pool, it's like, you're like, is that the edge? It's over there and you feel like you keep on swimming and like, you're like, am I at the edge and am I here yet? To me, that's like, you know, looking at the horizon in the distance. It's like, it seems like you're always like, oh my gosh, how far does this go? Like. You know, if we, if we tell ourselves or we train our brain, or maybe we grew up in a household where our parents rewarded us, you know, once we got that A plus on the test or once we got first place in the competition, it's, you know, it's this way of conditioning where we believe that, okay, or we only give ourselves permission once we finish something. So you know, we, we, we start thinking, oh, well, you know, I, I can't be happy on the way there. Like I can't, you know, be, choose happiness dur during the journey. It's like, I have to just be happy once I get that gold medal and I won. And then, but then it's like, I don't think you will be happy because you've put like, once again, happiness is literally a light switch. Like you can choose to go on and off whenever you want. So I think we forget in those moments that we have the power within all along and it's not about a gold me even though those things are amazing and i'm a total like you work like you go and like i'm a total hard worker myself but totally. it's just like you know we we should train ourselves to like realize that happiness is the journey and that's like the extra thing and mm. i just i just i don't think it's a coincidence when people kind of start getting into a depressed you know state of mind when they're like you know i've accomplished so many things and i've done so many things yet i'm not happy and i'm like well um maybe because you're talking about things and accomplishments and you're not like just realizing wait i my happiness is my responsibility it's not anyone else's and i have to decide that for myself and i have to realize you know i don't know i think it's just a really powerful thing when you actually realize that you can be like you can choose to be happy in this moment like right now with a snap of your fingers and when we train our minds to find the happiness in every moment, to me, that's like long lasting happiness. That's like genuine real life happiness where we don't give away our power and base our internal off of the external. Yes, absolutely. Wow, that was so powerful. Thank you. <laughs> wow. Of course. Yeah. Training your mind though, it really is, um, like I said, it's an active choice. Everything is a choice. Yes. It is. And another thing is that you, I, I know you said you, you've spoken in so many schools. So you've yes. been, you know, face to face with so many of these students and so many like Gen Z kids who are, are you know, really experiencing this in a heightened state. Um, and I'm curious to know your perspective on this because while on one end they've had to deal with social media and the anxiety that it can bring of comparing yourself to others and, and, and all of that, um, I also think, and there's statistics to prove that this new generation is the most willing to go to therapy, the most willing to mm -hmm. put themselves into self-care. They are, they're recognizing the problem and they're doing something about it. So what is your perspective on this generation? Do you think that they're gonna be the ones to maybe um, open the dialogue about anxiety, maybe really conquer it, or what do you think? I, I think so. Like, I really think that this generation and like Gen Z and the next generation, I really think that they are like, the generation that's just going to change it and i think this change has been building up for so long and it's you know slowly 
the last um, like two decade or just anything since like 2000, I feel like slow changes have been happening in the early 2000s and then 2010s. And I think it's just been gradual, more open conversations. And we've seen more celebrities speak out about their mental health struggles. And yeah. just, I think it's been so refreshing because I really feel that when we just are like open talking about something then it becomes less you know like taboo or like oh my gosh you know don't talk about that that's bad but it's like when it when we just discuss anxiety suicide depression bipolar more and more and more it just it becomes you know just I don't know I feel like we take away its power almost you know rather than avoiding it and never talking about it and not educating young people on it then it just becomes this like scarier, more daunting, heavy thing of like, oh gosh, if I have this, I uh, no one, you know. So I think the more open honesty, erase the stigma, and just let it be known that like a lot of people in today's society, you know, struggle or suffer, and they could have amazing jobs and do amazing things, but you know, it's it's just it's like it's okay, and I think just letting people know that you can take medication and still follow your dreams and like, you know, have to like fall in love and get married and have a family one day. It's like those things, you know, you can live with it. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and that brings up a beautiful point, which is like, is your goal really to rid yourself of it? Like, do you find that there's, is that potential, that possibility there? Or is it more a matter of like finding a way to live with it in a way that is still fruitive? Because, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think like for me personally, or yeah, just your your take on it because I think a lot yeah. of people are seeking a way to get rid of their anxiety and to you know live a normal life. And I think the truth of it is that you know it's it kind of just is a part of us the way that like our shadow selves are a part of us, and it's a matter of not judging mm -hmm. it and yourself and and finding ways to do with it that that makes sense. But I don't know, maybe if that's a, a a one-minded way of thinking of it and maybe there really is a way to, to live a life without anxiety I don't know yeah I mean I think it depends on a lot of things I think it depends on you know if it's hereditary for you if it runs in your family I think it depends on how your anxiety came to be like if you had a traumatic you know moment as a child and then you know since the or a near-death experience or something but I also think that anxiety is you can you know do therapy and there's so many ways to like have like you know that tool belt where you can just like tap in and you're like okay I know what to do and you can still live a full like a full fulfilling life but I think anxiety is you know it's one of those things I think it can scare people because one, I mean, there's no like, here, you take this pill and you're cured for the rest of your life. And, right, right. you know, I think also too is it's, it's you battling against yourself, which I think is the hardest thing because I think it's so easy, you know, to sit here and tell someone like, live your life, like love yourself. But then when it's you, you know, against yourself and your thoughts, you're like, yeah. holy guacamole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like this is unreal and it's a everyday it's an everyday you know journey and like i you know i can i don't know for me like i have moments where i want to i feel like i want to cry or i just want to give up or something and i'm like okay megan like you know bring it back to the basics like have you when's the last time you did deep breathing like i have to check in with myself and i have to act as my own therapist yeah Absolutely. And make the commitment. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. still work. You know, it's still, it still takes a certain amount of energy because maybe sometimes it is easier to just lay in bed and be like, I'm going to feel this. And yeah. while it does play a role, <laughs> you need to let yourself feel it so that it yes. helps you. Um, you also need to take action when it, when it becomes too much. So yeah. Yeah, definitely dedicating to routine. Are there any last and beautiful things that, I mean, you dropped so many gems, but if oh my gosh! right now who's watching and who's maybe new to the idea of, of dealing and coping with anxiety, is there any, maybe one thing that you would love for them to take away? Oh my gosh. Um, I would love for anyone listening to take away the fact that, you know, just to remember that we are in control and no matter what is going on in your life, 
just to take a pause and to really, you know, notice just how am I showing up in my life? And to really know that if you do, you know, feel like every day you wake up with racing thoughts and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel like I have 4,000 things to get done. And yeah. you start worrying and it's like a dog on a leash, you know, like you start off the walk, you're like, oh, I'm in control. And then halfway through, you're like, whoa. And the dog like takes off and you're like, oh gosh. Yeah. Just remember that like, you're the owner, you know, you pull that leash back in and you tell your mind, what to do and mm -hmm. just to know that you deserve to feel amazing and mm -hmm. you deserve to give yourself that gift every single day and it doesn't matter where you are or who you're around you can choose how you want to feel and i think just having that you know power of wait you know just because i'm on an airplane or just because i'm sitting in traffic or just because i'm you know talking to like that one family member or that, you know, that, that this person is like negative or whatever it is, you still can choose how you want to feel. And that's a beautiful thing. And you can still choose to like, you know, just kind of, you know, tune it out and just imagine you're on the beach in Hawaii. Like seriously, you, like we have the power and it might sound kind of kooky and some people might think I'm like cuckoo, but I like, I do that all the time. Like, you know, if I feel, just like I'm bored or, you know, I'll just start imagining me being on stage with Oprah. And then my mind, you know, my body starts to feel better. And I'm like, wow, I have more energy. The pit in my stomach kind of dissolved and yes. oh my gosh, of course, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then I, so to me, I love just kind of like flipping, you know, that switch of like, okay, let's go into like imagination land. And it makes me feel better. Yes. Absolutely. Me being like an only child, I live in my imagination and that yes. is absolutely a, an amazing tool and it'll directly reflect in your surroundings, you know, how you yeah. feel your reality. So yeah, that was an incredible thing to leave them with. And anything that I would add is um, the idea of embracing presence because mm. personally I find that a lot of my anxiety derives from when I'm living in my past or I'm living in my future and I find Ooh. like very much in the future um yes so much peace right and i'm sure you can attest that comes with just being here right now and feeling your environment and hearing the sound mm -hmm. and, like being um which sounds so big and you're like how do i just be but like be that's it yes so, so yeah. true <laughs> <laughs> but you are incredible and you Thank said you love for you to just plug anything because I'm so excited to hear about it and see what new insights you have for the world. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So everyone can find me on social media. I'm literally everywhere. I have my website, meganwgallagher.com. Um, my name, it's, it's long to spell, but I'll just do it. So, so Megan, M-E-G-A-N, there's no H or extra A or a Y. And then so Megan W, the letter W. And then Gallagher, um, G-A-L-L-A-G-H-E-R. You gotta do a little dance because it's <laughs> super long. <laughs> Just like the show Shameless, all that stuff. Um, and then, so Megan W. Gallagher, that's my handle on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I also have LinkedIn, Megan Gallagher. I have YouTube and I my website has my books, my blog my TED Talks, um, my contact info, if you want me to speak at a middle school or high school, or right now I'm doing one-on-one -on -one Zoom sessions with teenagers. And um, yeah, I'm everywhere. I have TikTok, Megan W. Gallagher, and it's really easy to find me because I have the same profile picture for all of my handles. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I have, let's see, I have my podcast, Reaching New Heights. I just started that. We are on episode 12, super pumped up. I basically, you know, it is my passion to just change the school system and to help teenagers. So I really have just, you know, created this podcast as a way for them to get like free advice and anything, you know, I think in schools, they don't really teach teenagers like, you know, well, what are your unique passions? Like they kind of just, you know, talk about the big broad subjects, but they don't talk about like, well, here's how to make it happen. And so I want to, I want teenagers to feel comfortable and to feel like it's not this daunting thing of like, well, I think I want to, you know, become a professional dancer or a singer, a songwriter, you know, a musician, but how do I do it? Like how, like what actual steps do you take? Right 
if you want to become, you know, a professional this, or how do you make money doing it? How do you make a living? So I want, you know, to interview Olympic athletes, like New York Times bestselling authors, the best of the best, right. and just literally ask them, how did you get to where you are? Like break it down really simple. And I just want to give that gift to teenagers of this is how they did it. And like, you can literally do anything too. Yes. Oh my God. That's so powerful. And thank yeah. you doing your purpose honestly genuinely thank you well, your purpose there's a glow that somebody has when they're doing what they're meant to be doing they're doing their divine mission yes and you're deep in it so thank you because that um that alone instills bravery for people to follow theirs so yeah, yeah and thank you for being here with me today and talking with me thank you. yeah thank I you so much jasmine <laughs> I hope that one day uh, I can see you in person. <laughs> that would be beautiful. Of course, it will happen really soon. I can't wait. <laughs> Absolutely, totally. But for anyone who's watching, I hope you took something from this. I hope that you love yourself and are doing the best that you can. The best that you can is good enough always. Of course. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you can follow me at Jasmine Kyleen, lollyluna.tv. Subscribe, like, if you feel called to. Uh, another one, yeah. Hope everyone has a beautiful day. <laughs> Thank you, guys.